Okay, we've already mentioned nanotechnology before when we're talking about the areas of technology, and that is already in your notes. I just want to have this extra PowerPoint to really kind of explain exactly what nanotechnology is all about. Nanotechnology is a brand new area of technology, probably has only been out in about the last decade or so, but this is one that the experts predict within the next 10 years or so will probably overtake communication technology as the number one technology in our world today. It is both exciting and scary. As we've already talked about, nanotechnology is a development of very, very, very tiny tools and machines. We've already got this in our notes, and again, you're not going to, have to take any more notes over this. I just want to kind of explain it a little bit better before you take the test. These machines are so small that a microscope is needed to see it, or per perhaps even something finer than that. It is a very ne new technology, as I mentioned, and it's predicted to greatly impact the future. It is both exciting and scary, and as we look over these notes, I want to talk about some of the things that will really be nice and some of the things that could possibly go wrong. And they believe that the normal rules of physics will no longer apply with these nano machines. For example, gravity will no longer apply. Well, how small are we talking when we're talking about nanotechnology? Well, to give you an idea, a sheet of newspaper is 100,000 nanometers thick. An optical motor may be between 100 and 300 nanometers across. So basically, we can put 300 of these motors within the diameter of a human hair. So we're talking extremely small. They're also being made at an atomic level, one atom at a time. Scientists have already created a wire that is one atom wide. So even if you could hold it in your hand or between your fingers, nobody could see it. It's that small. Now again, everything we're talking about with nanotechnology is in the laboratory. These are all ideas or concepts that scientists are talking about. They think can happen. And none of this is really out yet in terms of to the general public. How small are we talking? Well, a nanomachine is so small that it could be with inhaled without knowing. It could be swallowed without tasting and it could slide into the skin between your cells without feeling it. So in the future it's very possible instead of giving a student a shot and causing pain we could somehow figure out a way to just drop the medicine between the cells of the, the skin and they wouldn't even feel it. Now immediately we have a lot of questions here. One of the things that they're concerned about in terms of the safety of workers in a nano machine factory is what if they inhale these things or what if they swallow them what if they get into their body without knowing and what kind of negatives could happen from this and obviously that's something we really need to strongly address but the concepts are there and the ideas are intriguing even though there are dangers that we have to be aware of and, and can be concerned with if you look at the picture at the right that is an actual picture of a, a nano machine that's been created that is a working machine realistic in a laboratory has been made. If you look at the left, this is an artist's conception. This is not a real item, although this is what they think it might look like in the future. The little red things that you see in that slide or that picture are uh, red blood cells. And that nanobot is as big as the red blood cells. So even if you were to bleed, you wouldn't see that there. You wouldn't know it's there. You couldn't see it any better than you can see the red blood cells in the blood in your body. Well, how soon are we thinking about this things getting out into the market? Currently, there are over 200 nano-based products that they're working on. One is an odor-eating shoe insert, so we can completely eliminate foot odors in the future, which might be a good thing. The next step from that, of course, is to simply put these odor-eating nanobots into everything we wear. All of our clothing, we can pretty much get rid of body odor. Livelier golf balls that would go further when struck. And then we can look at a lot of different options from there. Golf balls, tennis balls, what other kind of possibilities are there? They're working on a canola oil that has nano-sized self-absorbing liquids to reduce the cholesterol in the oil. And as a matter of fact, they're working on it so that it would remove the cholesterol from your body when you use that oil. Forgive the word most there, I got a typo. These common commercial products are expected to be out on the market or start to be getting out on the market in 2016, which is not all that far away. 
some of the nano ideas that we want to talk about today and again I just want you to have a general idea of the possibilities it won't be on the test but these are things that scientists are working on that they think might happen one is robotic roaches that hide under the fridge until dark they would be light sensing then come out and clean up the kitchen of all food 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 crumbs sorry and waste having trouble talking here sorry about that they can create a chemical smell that attracts other live roaches or ants or any other thing and trick them into following the nanobots into traps and then we could adapt those for other animals and insects to help keep track of them or control of them when you get up in the middle of the night and you decide to go down to the refrigerator to get a drink and those nanobots are busy cleaning when you turn the light on they will sense that get out of your way hide back under something out of the way until you're gone and then they'll come back out mechanical flying cameras are already being experimented with the military and the military currently has drones but those drones are fairly large they can be seen by the enemy the enemy knows they're there and they can be shot down these will fly in a manner similar to a fly or a hummingbird where the wings actually will move and they'll be used for video surveillance they will practically be unnoticed if they do get uh, found the cost is fairly fairly low and it's not going to cause a problem and we can pretty much sneak in sneak out without them knowing we were even there I would not be surprised to find out later that these are already been used in military situations they already have one that weighs one twenty-fourth of a penny so if you had twenty-four of these in, your, in the palm of your hand it would weigh the same as a penny and the wingspan of a quarter so these are already being created in the labs and I suspect they're already probably being used a little bit by the military another concept is nano clothing or a smart shirt it would sense all body functions and predict things that are going to happen for example if you were doing something and suddenly your body is in pre heart attack mode and the shirt senses it it can automatically call the paramedics and get help there before you even have the heart attack if you're injured it can send the information at the end of the injury before help gets there so as the paramedics are on the way they could be notified at what type of emergency what kind of injuries are happening and what they need to bring to the scene to help the injured people they're also looking at these shirts or any type of clothing that if you were cut severely bleeding profusely they would actually tighten like a tourniquet and seal the injury until help can arrive negatives um, if we have this technology can other people find a way to gather your personal information one of the concerns would be say that you go into a interview for a job and somehow that person is able to track the information in your clothing finds out that you already have a cancer or a health problem or pregnancy or whatever it might be that they know is going to cost them more in insurance and they don't hire you based on that information another thing is your insurance company could reject you if they find out you've been using illegal drugs alcohol during an accident or anything else that the government decides that they want to outlaw for example smoking in the future the nano fridge is a pretty neat idea that they're working on right now and it will track food and tell you all of the recipes that you can make with the food that you have available in the refrigerator it can indicate that your food is out of date so you no longer get to take a swig of sour milk and it can track the food use and automatically send information to purchase new so in the future if you've ever gone to a bank drive up and you put your money into that canister and it goes to the teller and then they send it back to you they think it's possible we could do that with the grocery store the refrigerator would automatically contact the grocery store let them know what you need or what you're out of you can of course add or subtract what you do or do not want to have and then they would automatically ship those to you in underground tubes right to your home we would save a tremendous amount of money of course it would cost money to get started but we would save a tremendous amount of money in traveling and, and things like that they've already recreated in a lab of course a refrigerator freezer oven so when you get ready to go into work in the morning and say you want to have your food ready when you get home that night you've got a busy day and you want the family to have a good meal you throw a frozen chicken into this machine it will keep it frozen until excuse me until a specific time then it would start to thaw that food out at the next specific time it would start to cook it and when you get home at five o'clock or whatever time you get home the food would be ready to go and ready to eat 
Nano paint is a concept that they're working strongly with and the possibilities are really intriguing. They currently have nano paint in the laboratory. The cost is about $16,000 a gallon, which is extremely expensive. But if we can get the manufacturing going and the system working, we can get that down to a reasonable price. It might be worthwhile. A regular can of uh, gallon of paint right now would run anywhere from the teens to the 20s, possibly the $30 per gallon. This nano paint would automatically change color for the temperature outside. For example, in the winter, when you're, it's a little chillier out, it would turn to a darker color and absorb the heat from the sun and keep the house warmer. In the summer, it would go to a whiter color and reflect the heat and keep your house cooler. And the possibilities, again, are intriguing. For Christmas, you could possibly program your house to be a red and a green color, which you certainly probably would not want the rest of the year. When you're deciding to paint a room, instead of getting all of the materials out and having to do the painting, you would simply go to the computer and type in the code and automatically change the color of the room. So when your children are wanting to change colors of the rooms on a regular basis, it would not be a problem in the future. The paint would also automatically repair itself. So if the kids scratched it or dented it or caused a problem, it would automatically repair itself. So basically this can of paint, once you paint your house, you're done for the life of the house. You would never have to get, do it again. The military is already currently experimenting with blending, blending this so that it would camouflage soldiers or equipment against the background. And this is already in the works in the military purposes. Nano construction would also allow an entire structure to be built from one nano planet or nanobot. For example, we could send, we're getting ready to, uh, we think within the next 10 years we will have people living on the moon. We can send these nanobots up by spaceship. They would land, they would start building structures, and then in a few years when people came up to live, the structures are already there. They would just have to get them ready to be livable. And we could start exploring other planets. Nano bricks could actually change the R value, and the R value is the resistance to the temperature outside. How much will that property or that item prevent the transfer of cold or heat where you don't want it? Everything has an R value. Uh, a newspaper in the old days were used in the walls of the house to stop the wind from blowing through. Windows have an R value, but it's not very high. Your insulation will have very high R values, and the purpose is to keep the temperature outside away from the temperature inside to make it more comfortable. So for example if it were cold outside the brick would change its R value to become denser and prevent that coolness from outside to come into the house. If it's a beautiful day it's perfect temperature outside that R value could change and become neutral and allow fresh air to come in throughout the entire house. So this has a lot of possibilities. These bricks and the walls would also repair themselves from any damages. So you'd, once they're in place, they would never have to be repaired again. And they could also be able to filter pollutants and contamination from the outside away from the inside. And scientists believe that these actually would be stronger than steel. A lot of the nanobot properties that they're working with are going to be extremely strong. Cancer is a severe problem in our society today. Almost everybody knows somebody that's had or fought cancer. The problem with cancer is that we use chemotherapy and radiation and we put poison the entire body. Cancer cells grow faster than the other cells in your body and that's why they cause problems. And unfortunately, uh, by the time it gets big enough that we find it, um, it's already done a lot of damage and it's already become a problem. So what scientists will do is they will poison the entire body. The cancer cells absorb more poison and hopefully die, and then the, body, the patient can recover. The problem with this is that the patient is going to be extremely sick and had a lot of problems, loss of hair, loss of appetite, and become very sick themselves. Well, with nanotechnology in cancer, and we're going to show you a video of this. It's on one of the links we'll talk about later. They can, that one nanobot in your body can just travel in your body undetected. We can put that in as soon as you're born. You never know it's there, and there might be hundreds or maybe thousands of them. They're traveling around your body, and when they find one cell that starts to become cancer, 
they would immediately attack it, inject the chemo only into that one cell, killing that one cell, and you would never get sick, you would never even know you had it, and we could almost eliminate cancer completely. It is an exciting concept. Any drug that you take could be delivered right to that cell rather than affecting your entire body. And we could eliminate a lot of the side effects from a lot of the drugs that we have. They would then constantly patrol the body and be on duty against that infection or disease coming back ever again. RFIDs or radio frequency identification tags are smaller than an ant head and they're already being used in some cases right now in pets and then that animal gets a, a implant in the back of their neck if they become a stray and they go to the veterinarian they will scan it and they can find out who that belongs to well now we're getting smaller and smaller and smaller and you can see the RFIDs in the picture there and they're about one-third of the size of a regular ant head these can then be used to scan the products for price records data and everything else that the uh, business needs to know let's say for example in the future you go into the grocery store well currently you have to put everything into your cart when you get to the checkout you pull everything out they scan the price you put everything into bags and then you escort it out to your car in the future you put the bags right into your cart as you walk along you put them right into the bags and we eliminate the cashier and you walk right out the door it scans all of the food at once everything gets scanned at one time it scans you and it finds a item in your body that tells it where to deduct the, the cost of that food and it deducts it from your account now one thing my students always say well, is that well those cashiers are gonna lose their jobs and that is correct as technology advances jobs will change and you need to learn to be flexible your job needs to change with the technology so even though we're losing people to that technology hopefully they would find another type of job another type of technology to use we can also have these release a dye into your food that indicates that they've been spoiled so when you get into the fridge and you find that that pound of hamburger is turned a purple or an orange color that indicates it's no longer good we can also use this to unlock or lock doors for security we can get rid of all of your keys for all of the things that you own when you walk to your car it will sense you automatically unlock when you get comfortable it will automatically start the car for you when you're ready when you walk up to the door of your house it senses you it unlocks your door locks the door behind you and it will always let in your family or people that you indicate that can come in and it will stop other people from getting in again as we talk about these things there's exciting possibilities there are also are going to be problems that we're going to need to learn to address and if you have bad food or bad products that have been recalled for some reason they'll automatically turn that dye release that dye and indicate that this is no longer uh, a usable product scientists think that they can create a computer hard drive the size of a grain of salt now one thing my students always ask is well how do I type in how do I get the information off the screen and the bottom line is this is just the hard drive we don't need any of that other stuff we've already found ways that you can put information in by simply talking many people have a smartphone today that they simply talk and it will text or call the number that they want in the future this is going to replace the keyboard pretty quickly and if you are a student that's taken the keyboarding classes in probably the seventh grade those classes will be removed and eliminated we no longer need them uh, we think that we're going to get to the point where this communication is all done simply by thought scientists think they can create a featherweight weight airplane that is a hundred times stronger than steel but you can lift it by simply picking it up so in the future everybody in your neighborhood might have one airplane they simply carry it out of the garage put it in the road and take off from there and because it's so lightweight we don't need a lot of space or a lot of room in order to take take off from the airport or the street now the obvious concern is if you've got a hundred people in your neighborhood and they're all flying airplanes up in the air this is going to create a problem and again another thing that we're going to need to address another technology we're going to need to address these nanobots can create artificial bone skin and tissue so in the future if you break a leg you don't have to go to the doctor they will automatically repair it themselves and as we mentioned before scientists think they can make things entirely from atoms that fix themselves and don't follow the normal rules of physics that we know today 
Quantum Mirage by IBM is already being experimented and the data, excuse my typo there, the data can travel through solid walls, no wiring is needed. So you can take your television set and put it anywhere on the wall and it's automatically going to connect to the wiring and the cable that's throughout the entire wall. There will no longer in the future be outlets or cable hookups or phone hookups or anything of that sort. We also talked about many times as new atoms that the old law of physics won't apply. The nano paint that we're looking at developing could be used to block cell phone signals automatically at schools, movies, churches, or anywhere where it would be inappropriate to have your cell phone going off. So to start a church service, the minister, as he walks out, flips a switch, and that blocks everybody's cell phone signals, and they no longer will work during that period of time. When the service is over, they flip the switch, and now your cell phones will start to work again. So the problem of having phones in school, using them inappropriately, would no longer be a problem. Students would be free to carry them around as they need. And then we talked about before again, sensing danger by potty chemicals. One of the big things in the news today is bullying in schools or anywhere for that fact. And what could happen in the future is when somebody is under stress and the chemicals in their body kick in, the shirts or the clothing would automatically indicate that, sense it, contact the computers or the, the cameras at the school, have those cameras turn and face where the altercation or the problem is occurring, and record all of the information for uh, school officials to use later on. And this could be used in the community. This could be used in health purposes. It has a lot of possibilities. Nano problems. What could be the problems? Well, obviously, can someone steal your information? And the answer is almost assuredly. I doubt very seriously that we ever get to where we can prevent totally anybody from stealing information. As the internet, as all of the wonderful things with the internet have occurred, there have been a lot of people that have figured out ways to bypass that. I'm sure you're very aware of the viruses and all the things that are going around on the internet. Could we place a bug in your body and track you? For example, the President of the United States. Could a terrorist find out where the President is going to eat, put a nanobot into his food, he swallows it, it attaches to the stomach, and they can track him everywhere they want to go? Would it be right for parents to track their children that way? Again, these are problems that we're going to have to address as the technology happens. Can machines do the wrong thing? And, of course, they can. We have many movies out about that. Not always accurate movies, but again, they're addressing what could possibly go wrong. Can machines fail? And again, certainly they can. And can machines take control? Again, we have a, a lot of ideas about that. iRobot is a good example of a movie where the machines take over, and this could be a problem that we need to be aware of. What's going to happen in the future with nanotechnology? Well, we already mentioned bodies that self-heal with minor injuries. So if you've broken bone, you have a cut, the nanobots would automatically go to that area and start repairing the injury. Can we reintroduce ext extinct animals? Well, we can't right now because the DNA in dinosaurs, for example, if you remember the movie Jurassic Park, the uh, DNA in there is so dried out, so old, that we cannot, we cannot use it. But as we get better technology and as we learn more, it's quite possible that they can get it out of what little is left. So that is a, a possibility. One of the great things, in my opinion, since I'm over 50, is eliminate most aging appearances. Wrinkles in the skin, crow's feet near the eyes, the aging spots that you get on the skin, the graying of the hair, all of these things could be eliminated by the nanotechnology that's in your body. We could theoretically determine at what age we want to freeze our look and remain that, that pretty much that look for the rest of our lives. And personal computers would be as quick as thought. And we talked about the grain of salt and planting that in your body. So in the future, you think about something and it happens immediately, which would certainly be an improvement over the technology that we have today for our PCs. But then again, what kind of problems would occur from that? You know, if the computer is able to record an answer to every thought you have, um, that could be a little bit scary. We talked about before the nanobots in the buildings can create the buildings as well as keep them repaired and take care of themselves. So even though it's going to be more expensive in the future to create buildings, once they're created, they'll never grow old. Computing and the internet in the future will be nearly free. There would be almost no cost because it would be so easy to make everything. 
and the computers would become embedded in everything and barely visible. They would be in the desks, in the chairs, in your walls, in your clothing, almost everywhere you go, everything you do, the computers would be there. And again, would this become a problem? And it certainly could be. Now, that's the end of our slideshow. And hopefully you've got a little bit more information about what nanotechnology would be for the test.